Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and I am the gracious uh, guest today of Jim Sullivan. We're taking a look at a number of his guns, including these. Uh, this is a pair of 22 caliber self-loading rifles that uh, Jim Sullivan was actually designing with some financial backing from none other, none other than John Wayne. Um, these were originally intended to compete with the 1022, and the idea was they would fund a startup company that then would, would then go on to produce some other really cool products. So um, ultimately there were some hiccups in, in Wayne's family and uh, the financial support kind of went away, uh, which left these two prototypes built and nothing else went into production. But there's some neat features to these guns and of course they're two of a kind and really cool to look at. So we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at them and how they work and what might have been. So Mr. Sullivan, these are your rifles. You're right. going to Take one apart and show us how they work. Okay. You got a magazine release button there on the side. And then you push it in again. Now this is free to swing around. Okay. And that actually acts as your the magazine release spring. Right. It does. has that flat piece of metal. And then this lifts up. Oh, that's cool. The whole side plate just comes off, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Little blowback bolt. This comes out. Well, that's pretty simple. <laughs> Here's the trigger mechanism. Okay. So that's your hammer. And this acts as a spring for this, which is the safety. Okay. And one of the interesting features of this is while the safety is engaged, the bolt locks open on an empty magazine. Right. So if you need to, you know, set the rifle down safe at a firing line, you can engage the safety and lock the bolt open. But if the safety is disengaged, then uh, it it won't lock open right. and just cycles and fires normally. And if I have a penny, and I do, you can take I like the barrel this, out. I like where this disassembly is going. <laughs> so you got a, a retaining screw there on the very bottom. Now, did you design that for a penny, or is that just yeah. kind of cool coincidence? No, it's designed for it. That's okay. a special screw. We made it. I never do enough. <laughs> no matter how many times I've done this, I've never turned it enough times. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes later. <laughs> Anyway. Wow. All right, so that's a, a contained screw. You don't actually have to take that all the way out. Right. It's just when it does, right it, it pushes pen. this up against a a V block. Okay, and then there's two pins. Okay. That you can see that are. So if we look inside there, you can see the two pins inside, and those pins go into those two semicircular holes in the barrel, and push threading that screw in pushes the barrel upwards into those two pins. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's a clever way to lock that in place. And it's quite accurate. You, you can take the barrel out, put it back in. You have to fire a couple shots just to get kind of get everything settled down again. Okay. And then it uh, goes to the same hole that it did before you took it out. Okay. I like the feel of this too. One, honestly, one complaint I've always had with the 1022 is that the stock's short and the grip's small and it just doesn't fit me well. Right. This is nice and beefy and full size and I'm sure if this had gone in production you could very easily have a youth model with a little shorter stock sure. on it. But uh, of course you did also have the version with a little um, uh, rail on top Yeah. for mounting a Yeah, the rail scope. Are, the rail is oh, here right. too. Oh, right. Rails on all of them. And that's what this sits on. So yeah. Nice little aperture sight there. Yeah. These are really cool. <laughs> it's not like there's a shortage of 22 caliber rifles out there, but it's it's too bad this one never made it into production. Right. We should point out to people is that this was probably a five round magazine? This one, no, it was ten. Is that ten? And it's double column. Yeah. Okay. This way. And then you have that's 25. 20, 25? Yeah. Nice. And that worked most of the time. This was fifty and didn't work. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people have issues with trying to get large capacity 22 rimfire mags to work, don't they? Oh, but it looks cool. Yeah. 
I think there are a lot of uh, 1022 50 round magazines out there that yeah. don't work either. Oh. <laughs> Not the ones Ruger makes, but <laughs> well, very cool. So, any plans to ever put this into production in the future? Um, oh, every once in a while I get an opportunity to talk to someone about it, but I think it could compete with the 1022. It seems like it. I'd buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. You've got the, uh, the old military style front sight blade on there too, right. and a nice aperture sight. In fact, instead of the the, the buckhorn or the notch mm -hmm. sight, that's a, a much more accurate way to go. Mm -hmm. oh. Cool. Well, thank you very much for uh, sharing this with us. Oh, we you appreciate bet. it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Tune in again to Forgotten Weapons for more prototype rimfire plinkers.